Okay, I'm live and welcome everybody. Today is uh, May 4th, um, which is May the 4th with you. I think that uh, I read, so not that I remembered, but I read that today is the 40th anniversary of the release of Return of the Jedi, which is, I think, something related to the 4th. May the 4th be with you. Anyway, hope the 4th is with you. I hope the 5th is with you. I hope everything's with you. Anyway, Today's topic, I couldn't figure out what to talk about this week. I didn't give it much thought, but I said, okay, let me talk about adrenal cystic lesions because I just read a couple articles that I took notes on that I thought were very good. And let me discuss that with you. I just gave a talk on the adrenal last week, adrenal masses, and I typically would show some cysts, and then I would comment that cysts can be large and be symptomatic. Cystic lesions can have calcification around the edge. And those can be benign epithelial cysts, although when I see a cystic lesion that's calcified, I usually think about a hematoma. And it can range in size from a centimeter to 10 centimeters. I also usually speak about pheochromocytomas and mention how there can be cystic pheos. I never thought about that, but we've seen a lot of them the last couple of years. And so even when I quiz people, before in the past, they never would mention cystic pheos. Now they mention it right away. And the pheos are typically hypervascular, but they can be cystic. Um, when the ones are cystic, sometimes it's because they bled previously. When they are cystic, often the center, center is cystic, and then the rim is hypervascular. So that makes it a bit easier. You can see cystic areas or a large part of the lesion can be cystic in large uh, cystic adrenal cortical carcinomas. Usually, the, the cystic zones are areas of necrosis, so it's usually a mix of cystic and solid, but sometimes I've seen it where it's a preponderance of the cystic component of the lesion, but uh, not necessarily, okay? And then you can have infarcts, that's rare. You can have abscesses, that's really rare. Um, what else can be cystic? Old hemorrhage. Remember with hemorrhage, um, depending on its cause, could be an underlying tumor, could be anticoagulant therapy, could be trauma. Uh, most adrenal glands after a time will look okay. Sometimes they'll calcify. Sometimes the hematoma, be it in kidney, adrenal, liver, spleen, can calcify. So there's a number of things. So let's just go through them a little bit more carefully. Adrenal cyst, benign, water density, well-defined, no definable rim, if you give contrast, you can see the borders, but you're not seeing a definite rim, and surely you're not seeing any enhancement or wall thickening of note. That's a simple cyst. There's epithelial, there's epidermoid, there's old hematomas, and parasitic cysts. Parasitic cysts are rarer, surely in this part of the world. You can see hydatid cysts involve the adrenal gland, but then they have these coarse calcifications, but that's exceedingly rare, okay? But it can occur. Most of the time when I see a lesion that's calcified, water density, I'm gonna say it's an old hematoma, but epithelial cysts can calcify. I have some good examples, but you know, calcification around the edge of something to me always points to the prior bleed. And again, if you assume there's no underlying tumor, the prior bleed is going to control the situation. We then talk about pheochromocytomas. Pheo is typically vascular, hypervascular, but they can bleed, and then that's why you have cystic pheos. It's not so much that they're necrotic as they had bled. Sometimes you'll see a lesion where there's no vascularity left, and you have a big cystic lesion, and it's eventually removed, and then you say, aha, it was a pheo. Now, if you get uh, metanephrines, you can make the diagnosis. If the patient's hypertensive, you can make the diagnosis. But again, I think pheo's a great mimicker, so here's another example of where it mimics a cystic lesion or an old hematoma. So again, pheos can be cystic. I mentioned most of the cases I do show and I do see, the rim is in hypervascular and the center is cystic. So you're still going to go with the rim. Differential typically is between an ACC and a cystic pheo. You can get mets that are pheo. Uh, things that come to mind will be renal cell carcinoma, the same reason they bleed, melanoma, other possibilities. And then from there, I can say, well, what else? Lymphoma can be low density, but it's usually triangular, right? 
So cystic, I don't think a lymphoma, maybe treated lymphoma, but primary adrenal lymphoma, low density, but not that low density. Um, ACC, adrenal cortical carcinomas, they can have cystic components. I think to have an ACC that's all cystic, that would be incredibly rare. I think with ACCs, what you do typically see are areas of hypervascularity, areas of cystic change, areas of calcification. You can occasionally see some uh, macroscopic fat. But typically with ACCs, that large, no, not always, but the ones that have cystic components are typically going to be large. You can see in the pediatric population, I should mention neuroblastoma. Neuroblastoma can be cystic, big cystic lesions, cystic neuroblastoma. That's a thought. I mentioned the METs, primary ACC FIOs. I mentioned all of that and the routine cystic lesions. Is there anything I'm leaving out? I don't think so. If you think about um, bleeds in general, so maybe if you just had a bleed, you're on anticoagulant therapy, you're on Coumadin, um, you can bleed. Usually bleeds, the lesions aren't that big, and there's an oval appearance of the adrenal bleed, and then the haziness around it. With time, you know, anything, blood can resorb. So a cystic lesion and adrenal gland can be a prior hematoma, so it's good to think about. Um, I've seen adenomas look cystic, but those cases have often been a prior bleed and within an adenoma. That's rare, but it does occur, and sometimes you can see really large masses. So there are a number of things that can be cystic. I've covered a bunch of them. Again, clinical history, age of patient uh, are all very important, the CT appearance, appearance of contralateral adrenal gland, other organs, how they look, and the clinical history are all things that become important. So with that, go to our teaching file, take a look at some cases. You could look at my last talk on the adrenal. I'm working on a new talk where maybe I'm going to focus on some of the things I spoke about today. And then you'll be able to see a whole bunch of cystic adrenal lesions, including on our teaching file. And with that, I wish everybody a great day. And I'll see you next week. Bye, guys.